up, everyone? Welcome back to more Phoenix Wright's Attorney Dual Destinies. Last time we left off, we finished Chapter 4, and it turns out Athena was the killer all along. No, no, I'm joking. She's not actually the killer. But her fingerprints were found on something only the murderer could have held, so I guess we'll figure that out now. But for now, it's time to get into the final episode of this game. Well, final episode of the game itself, not the final episode of my Let's Play. <laughs> Um, turnabout for tomorrow, which, yeah, I, I see you there, Miles Edgeworth, and I also see a black cycloc in front of Athena, so, hmm, you know? Because <laughs> they never really explained that in Apollo Justice. It just showed up, and he was like, hmm, I don't think I can break this. Gavin's just like, haha, I'm evil. No one can escape their past. Finally gonna learn Athena's backstory. Oh! Showing this again. Hmm. This doesn't look like a good time. The sins we've committed, and the sadness we've caused. Ooh. Black for why? Dang, this music is epic. No matter how far we run, her past remains. As every present as the moon in the sky. As ever present. Not every. <laughs> oh! Apollo. Remember, this is the opening scene to the game, wasn't it? And I was like, who's that evil looking dude? And I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> he does look pretty evil with this on, though, doesn't he? <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks that? That was a cool image trick. I like, I like. It looms in wait for the day when we are forced to face it. But only in doing so can we truly make peace and move on in hope towards the morrow. Wow. Quite a way to start the chapter, but I'm loving it so far. Let's, uh, this chapter is really short, by the way, so. Uh, but I assume the sections themselves are super long, so that's gonna be fun. They took Athena from the courtroom. Straight to the station. She's probably being questioned at this very moment. <laughs> I've lost everybody. <laughs> My life sucks. Besides Trucy. Let's wait and see how long she's gonna be here, I guess. <laughs> nah, I'm sure Trucy. I don't know if she'll be like my backup for this chapter. That'd be nice if she's like, well, nobody else is here, so I guess I'll come with you. <laughs> After this past year, I took it for granted that those two would always be here. But now, Apollo has gone off on his own to seek his own truth. And my pursuit of the truth only ended up with Athena becoming the new suspect. Some boss I turned out to be. It's even quieter in here than usual. Yeah. Seems so empty, too. I just don't get it, Dad. All your reasoning during the trial seemed perfectly solid. Yeah, I still believe it was. At least based on what we know. But now, Athena is the one who's being accused. During the trial for the bombing and murder that occurred at the Cosmos Space Center, The lighter used by the real culprit was found. This lighter proved the defendant Solomon Starbuck innocent. But Athena's prints were found on it instead. And she was subsequently arrested for the murder. But Athena couldn't have done it. It just doesn't make any sense. No, none of it does. I've been racking my brain, but I just can't figure it out. Ugh, where's the flaw in my reasoning? What have I got wrong in this case? You know, Dad, if Athena, if Athena was here, she wouldn't just be sitting around thinking. She'd be out there doing something. You are going to defend Athena, right, Dad? Of course I will. And thanks, Trucy. I needed that push. Trucy's right. The trial is tomorrow. There's no time to waste. 
If I'm gonna prove Athena's innocence, I'd better get out there and find some evidence. Off we go then. We're on a hunt for evidence and I'll prove Athena's innocence. Great, but before we go, I'd better tidy up the evidence I have on it. Oh! We're keeping all the evidence? Oh, <laughs> we're gonna have so much evidence by the end of this. Athena's probably still in the middle of being questioned. So Trucy's right. The thing to start with is talking to people at the Space Center. Yay, Trucy, I'm glad you're back. I, I was I was glad. I don't want you to be a nothing character. <laughs> I hate you. Director Cosmos, do you have a minute? Ugh. Galactic Scooter, full speed ahead. Oh. Yeah, he, <laughs> Director, he scooted away. His expression changed the instant he saw you, Dad. Yeah, well, I dragged his name through the mud pretty good at the trial earlier today. All right, who's in the boarding lounge, the boarding lounge, the boarding lounge? <laughs> Is he going to be in here too? <laughs> He's like, wait, Dr. Cosmos! <laughs> He's like, oh, god dang it. <laughs> we were here only yesterday. Oh, hey. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Starbuck, you've been released, huh? Yep, and I came straight here. This is all thanks to you and your team, Mr. Wright. You've given me a second chance to fly into space again. I can't thank you enough. Except... Uh... Wh what's wrong? I thought he'd be happy to be acquitted. As I was coming out of the detention center, I saw Miss Sykes. I he saw Athena? I was at a loss for words. I didn't know what to say to the poor girl. And then, you know what? She flashed a peace sign at me. Congratulations on your acquittal, she said. Now you can go back into space someday. Yeah, that sounds like Athena. I can just picture it. But I saw her eyes. They were red and swollen from crying. She's got to be suffering. She must be so worried. And yet she went out of her way to be nice, give me that big smile. She held back her own tear so she could give someone else a smile. That's so Athena. <laughs> There's no question about it. That girl is innocent. Please, Mr. Wright. You have to make sure she goes free. And then... And then they can put me in prison instead. I don't mind. We can't have that either, Mr. Starbuck. Don't worry, Mr. Starbuck. I'm gonna give her the very best defense I can. I promise get her acquitted. Just like I did for you. I know she'll be alright with, with you in her corner. I know you'll never give up on her. Apollo is a fine boss to look up to. I still can't believe Launchpad 1 was switched with the Space Museum. What could have made Director Cosmos do such a thing? I have the foggiest idea. Uh... So there never was going to be a launch that day. Not from the very beginning. I wonder if Clay knew. I imagine he must have. Surely he would have noticed when you went to board the rocket. It's pathetic to think I was the only one who got taken in. Uh... Well, I guess that's about how it goes, when you're worth less than space debris. Is he gonna be alright, Dad? His expression looks as dark as a black hole. Well, that's just how he is. Mr. Starbuck, do you remember anything about the murderer? Not really. I only saw a shadowy figure in the dark, after all. Yeah, I guess that was a little too much to hope for. <laughs> hey, I heard something from the police, though. They said they never did a they never did find a point ten caliber gun down that trash chute. Just as I thought. The culprit must have carried it away with them when they escaped. So was the person you saw holding a gun, Mr. Star So was the person you saw holding a gun, Mr. Starbuck? Uh I couldn't really tell. But it wasn't <laughs> Whoa, that, that, that's weird. But it was it wasn't a theater, right? Could you tell if the person was male or female? Tall or short? Uh, I can't even tell you that much. Man, I'm useless. When the culprit opened the door and some light came in, I should have been able to see. The door. Ah, yes. Butter, 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 butter. As I recall, they opened this door here as they made their escape. The door to launch pad one, right? Yeah, except right now, the door leads to the space museum. You mean the launch pad and the space museum are switched right now? Yeah, they're trying to investigate the theory you came up with in court. So they're recreating the conditions, huh? I'd like to see what's beyond that door now. So, I guess 
I guess the Phantom, whoever this Phantom is, he is the one who did this, isn't it? He's, uh, he, or she, I'm not gonna assume. They, even though that's incorrect English, but whatever. <laughs> they are, um, they came back for some reason. Why? Is this all a setup to get Athena locked up or something? They don't want her to find out the truth of seven years ago or something, maybe, possibly, I don't know. Miss, Mr. Starbuck, could you open this door for us? Sure, so let me have my print scanned here. Ah. Do, do, do the launch pads get switched back and forth a lot? Well, back when the Space Museum was Launchpad 2, they used to switch the pads around at times. But these days, Launchpad 2 is only used as a tourist attraction, right? Right. Because, quite frankly, the Space Center needs the money. I hear you. Times sure are tough. We live in the Great Depression. <laughs> it's 2028. It's like almost a year after the Great Depression. It's fine. The Great Depression 2. Dad, let's go check out what's beyond that door. Sure, let's go. Hey, why don't I come along? I can show you around. I see a leaf. It's a leaf. Huh? I wonder what these dead leaves are doing here. Maybe they are stuck at the bottom of somebody's shoes. There are lots of trees around the space center. She's right. It's a modern state-of-the-art building, but it's surrounded by trees. But I don't know. If they were stuck to the bottom of somebody's shoes, wouldn't they look more crushed up? These don't look like they've been stepped on. Maybe there's some kind of secret hatch in the corridor, and they came in that way? Not everything is set up like a magician's stage, you know? Another one of those devices for opening the door, huh? Yep, but this one doesn't require fingerprint verification. You just hit the button, open sesame. So when you and Clay went through here, you didn't need to show your prints either? That's right, Trucy. Just like how the culprit didn't need to scan their prints when they escaped back out of the Space Museum corridor into Boarding Lounge 2. Ah, okay. Well, I don't see anything else that jumps out at me. And I imagine this corridor is built exactly like the Launchpad 1 corridor. I'm going to assume he's back now. <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Cross the wretch who sullied my good name. Reverse course and full speed away! Dr. Cosmos, wait! God dang it. <laughs> I'll handle this, Dad. Take that! Ah! Oh, the mobility system has been compromised! Juicy's knife throw. Tru God, what is wrong with me? Juicy's knife throw is a direct hit to one of his tires. I only played as Athena for one case. What is this? And the streak continues. <laughs> Maybe I should have kept a closer watch on what trick she's been practicing. <laughs> mm, my dear old battleship, we fought many a skirmish together. It has been an honor. <laughs> Dad, he's gonna blow that thing up. <laughs> nah, I bet all that button will do is make you go haywire again. <laughs> mm, very well. I surrender. As a prisoner of war, expect to be treated honorably. Oh. Director Cosmos, when you were talking about talking in court about switching the launch pads, you used your right to remain silent about the reason as to why. I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us why he switched the two launch pads to begin with. Uh, please, I can't. I, I exercise my right to remain silent. But I will say, my hands were tied. I was only doing what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. Mm -hmm. The center of the cosmos is shrouded in mystery, but I don't have any secrets left. Now that my battleship has been destroyed and I've been taken prisoner... Oh, and there it is. Oh, three psyche locks, holy crap. No secrets left, huh? I beg to differ. Looks like I'll have to undo Cyclox if I want to get to the bottom of this. I don't know if it... Uh, do I have enough? Eh, let's try it out. 
What do we got? Oh wait, I didn't save. Can I save in here? Oh, I can, okay, cool. Behind the switching of the launch pads. I want you to tell me everything you're hiding about the switching of the two launch pads. I refuse. You can not make me. I can hold out longer than anyone. I hope I never get like this when I'm old. <laughs> now let's see, where to start? This is how you explain your motive for switching the launch pads. You did it. Save the astronauts, that's the reason you gave. Thanks to you switching the launch pads, the astronauts escaped injury from the blast. Instead, they safely boarded the museum's rocket far away from the actual explosion. <laughs> My astronauts were rare to go out on an authentic adventure in space. How do you propose I had them board a fake rocket without them noticing? I agree you couldn't have done it without help. For one, they would have figured it out the instant they stepped into the space museum. You figured you could fool Mr. Starbuck once he'd been drugged with his medication, but... Without the help of this person, it would have been impossible to pull your plan off. Oh, he had Clay with him. Oh, Clay. You must have gotten Mr. Terran to help you. <laughs> he stole the tranquilizers from his mentor's locker and slipped them to him. And then, with Mr. Starbuck in a daze, they boarded the replica rocket in the museum. <laughs> Someone please help this poor prisoner of war! How is he able to spin around like that? <laughs> Boom! One down. If you really want to save the astronauts' lives, shouldn't you have just called off the launch? If I had done that, do you think I would have gone to, the, uh, to all the trouble? I guess he must have had a compelling reason why he couldn't call it off. But how did you know to switch the pads in advance of the bombing incident? W well, that's because... <clears throat> I was warned in advance. Once I received that warning, it was my duty to ensure my astronauts' safety. But it was just a warning. It could even have been a prank. Why did you believe in it so completely? But because I went to one of those mediums that everyone's talking about these days. Oh, I didn't realize channeling was back in vogue. Besides, I thought it was you yourself that got the warning via the via telephone. Yes, that's right. The bomber contacted me personally. My battleship is equipped with a special advanced communication device, you see. AKA a regular old telephone. It's been a while. Planning another launch. I see you haven't learned. I'll never forget the terror I felt when I received that call. The bomber said, it's been a while. And that was enough to make you take the threat seriously. Perhaps Director Cosmos took the threat so seriously, because the Space Center had been involved in a bombing once before. Maybe. The culprit in the current case is the same person who was involved in this incident. The, do, 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 the Hat One Miracle. The Hat One Miracle, that epic story of survival. People across the nation know it now as the heroic tale of bravery. But in truth, it was an act of sabotage perpetrated by our current killer, wasn't it? Very few know about the previous plot, so when the caller said it's been a while, you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the danger was real, and it wasn't a prank. Ugh! Didn't anyone ever tell you to go easy on an ex-serviceman? Oh, one left. Yes, that one miracle really was a desperate battle against an act of sabotage. I even lost the life of one of my staff members in the fight. Sabotage. Murder. <laughs> so this is the only truth behind Hat One Miracle. I let my guard down. I thought the saboteur had been caught, and that the case was closed. Huh? Wait a minute. The murder at the Space Center seven years ago. This must be the person Director Cosmos thought was the culprit. Blackwell. Yep. Simon Blackwell. The murder suspect in the case that happened here seven years ago. This, the place and time of the two incidents, the murder and the sabotage, were the same. So you thought that he committed both crimes. But while Prosecutor Blackwell was behind bars, he got another threatening call. If the culprit this time is the same as seven years ago, then it isn't Simon Blackwell. Realizing that, you were shaken. It meant the true culprit's been running free all this time. Uh, how do you keep seeing straight through me? Got him. Unlock successful. Ha ha. Switching the launch pads. The reason why Director Cosmos won't talk about why he switched the launch pads is connected to the truth behind the Hat One miracle, the sabotage and murder that happened at this space center seven years ago. Director Cosmos, tell us what you're hiding. <laughs> if you really want to understand the reason I decided to switch the launch pads, uh, uh, oh, is it time? We'll have to start with the story of that horrible nightmare from seven years ago. Seven years ago? You mean the so-called Hat One Miracle? Oh, I bet she's gonna say, Oh, it was no miracle. 
The launch went smoothly, but once the ship entered outer space, then the troubles began. It was all the handiwork of a certain person and their evil scheme. So Mr. Starbuck's tra traumatic experience wasn't accidental. Not only that, but before the launch, a very valuable piece of moon rock was stolen. But that wasn't the worst of it, one of my staff members was murdered! Wow, I had no idea such awful events were behind that exciting story of space heroism. All that, in spite of the Space Center having very strict security in those days, all personal effects were examined thoroughly, coming or going. You couldn't even smuggle a wither or leaf through those checkpoints. So, do you have any clue who is responsible for the sabotage? At the very least, I know it wasn't Simon Blackquill. Ha, huh, so that was interesting, he just said a shriveled up old leaf, right? Which is the exact thing we found. Huh, that's... Might just be a coincidence, but... I don't I don't know him enough to identify the true culprit, but, it, but it's clear what that person was. To put it simply... He's gonna say a phantom. Oh no, <laughs> a spy. No, no, no. A spy? You mean somebody who infiltrates a foreign country? Carries out dangerous missions? And always gets the girl? <laughs> Someone's watching way too many late night movies. Well, I guess we're talking about blowing up a rocket and stealing research material. It's not all that surprising that the spy can be behind it all. So why do you think it's a spy? Make no mistake, this cutthroat rivalry between nations and the space R&D race. Some try to outdo others by any means possible, even deliberate obstruction. Seven years ago, we got a call before the launch warning us all of sabotage. The same MO as this time. Yes, and Nero thought the perpetrator had been caught, but it looks like I was wrong. Prosecutor Blackwell seems more like a ninja than a spy, don't you think? Aren't ninjas and spies basically do the same thing? Bite your tongue, Dad. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. There's a good reason why you failed to find the real spy. A massive cover-up by the government. Government officials are too embarrassed to admit that they had allowed such a thing to happen at the hands of a spy. Don't tell me they made the police rush the investigation. They did indeed, and then to cover up the sabotage, they cleaned up the story. And that was the Hat One miracle, wasn't it? But then seven years later, the same MO advanced warning of sabotage. That must have been the director's reason for switching the launch pads. Just like seven years ago. Seven years ago, the spy gave you advance warnings of their plans, just like this time. That was what made you decide to switch the launch pads, wasn't it? That's right. The caller knew the facts of the case seven years ago, despite the cover-up. They knew about the sabotage, the moon rock, the murder. And they said, You don't want things to go like they did seven years ago, do you? I immediately thought of calling off the launch, but the government wouldn't let me. We don't give in to the likes of terrorists, we must proceed for our country's honor. It was quite a moving speech, actually. Moving? Really? Maybe if you're usually inspired by political talking points. <laughs> but I knew the truth. We had been warned, which meant that the danger was very real. And I knew there was no way to stop the spy. No matter what I did, they would find a way. That's why I switched the launch pads and, start and staged the moving rescue scene. First, I snuck into the center the night before and switched the launch pads. That way, the astronauts would go to the boarding lounge one to the space museum. Then I put a close repair sign at the door to launch pad one board in boarding lounge two. You did that so normal visitors wouldn't enter, right? What else did you do? I enlisted the help of several staff members, including Tara. But you didn't let Mr. Starbuck in on it. He'd already been through enough, and he's not good at lying to keep a secret. I'm afraid I had no choice but have him drugged. My plan went well until... Clay's murder, huh? After the culprit made their escape, I switched the launch pads back. I did in such a way that no one would find out. But after all that effort... Terran is dead, and the hat too is destroyed. And the hope capsule which had returned to us only recently was also lost in that blast. My home, the center of the cosmos... My beautiful Cosmos Space Center is done for! Wait, what did he mean by the Hope Capsule was lost in the blast? I thought that the Hope 1 ca capsule was found at the crime scene with Sir Terran. He had just been brought back by the Hope Space Probe with asteroid samples inside. So what kind of samples are they? What's in them? The samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. We haven't had time since they just came back the day before Terran's murder. The capsule was being held in a safe in Launch Pad 1, but I gave it to Terran before the incident so it wouldn't be destroyed in the explosion. The idea was that, with it safely in Terran's possession, he could make it look like he rescued it during the stage's miraculous escape. 
but our precious research materials ended up lost to that explosion anyway. And I thought Clay was supposed to keep it safe. You misunderstand. The launch pad explosion wasn't the one that cap the capsule was lost to. It was lost after the police confiscated it as evidence. Oh, it was the courtroom bombing from the other day. The capsule was there in the courtroom as evidence and was blown to smithereens. Or was it? You didn't know the casualty of that blast. Ultimately, I think the culprit may have known about the switching in the launch pads. What? How? The police found a wiretapping device during their investigation today. A bug aboard my battleship. A tape on my a tap on my advanced communication system. A wire on that phone? Yes. A wire on this very phone. I used this phone to give instructions to my staff about the launch pad switch. Just to the few select members who knew about the plan. Just before the incident, staff members were coming in and out of launch pad one. The cover probably slipped slipped in with them amid the confusion, and planted the bomb then. Yes, if they were tapping your phone, they definitely could pull something that, like that off. So you really think the same spies behind this incident the one seven years ago? Yes, I'm sure of it. And this spy must be the phantom prosecutor Blackwell's been chasing. The prosecutor Blackwell told me once. The hunt I've been on for the the hunt I've been on for the phantom of seven years ago, seven years past, continues even still. For starters, that case happened right here at this very space center too. So if we can find this phantom, that's right. We can clear Athena's name. And then there's the matter of Prosecutor Blackwell too. What about him? Well, if the culprit of seven years ago is the same person as in the current incident, he would mean Prosecutor Blackwell is innocent. That's still an if, though. Hmm, I wonder how dangerous that guy would be in court without handcuffs. But if we're gonna go on a ghost hunt, count me in. <laughs> it's all over for me. Spin, spin, whirl, whirl, I'm done for. The center of the cosmos is doomed. You think he's gonna be alright, Dad? Well, at least he'll be in good company. There must be planets out there he can spin with. Which reminds me, I'd like to delve a little deeper into the Hat 1 mission, too. If you want to learn more, start with the Space Museum. There's a Hat 1 exhibit there. Oh, don't mind me, I'll just keep spinning here and see how the cosmos unfolds. It's like he achieved spiritual enlightenment or, enlightenment or something. I'm sure he'll stop when he gets dizzy. Let's go visit the Space Museum. <laughs> Somebody help! Bunku! I bet you it's you, Ponko. You're the killer all along. Oh no, how did you know? Let's see. Where's the exhibit on the launch seven years ago? There's that stupid thing again. There, that's the Hat 1 exhibit. Oh wow, look at that photo of the team. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. There's Clay and Mr. Starbuck, Director Cosmos, or Blackwell, and even Ponko. But I've never seen the woman on the right before. I assume she's the one related to Athena, because she's somehow related to this case. Mother? Sister? Mother? Sister? <laughs> Everyone looks so happy. Well, except for Director Cosmos. I think that is his happy face. Let's check out the newspaper article, too. Hat 1 launch imminent. And there's a photo of the Hope Space Probe. I guess it's only natural it doesn't talk about the murder or the sabotage. They really were keeping it a secret, just like the director said. Dad, take a look at that jacket. It must be the Hat 1 team's uniform jacket. It's the same design as the one Apollo was wearing, the one that belonged to Clay. Actual jacket worn by Hat 1 team member, it says. Not a replica, huh? What if it was Mr. Starbucks? Oh, okay. Uh... Hello? Is it... Oh, ha what? why are you here? <laughs> Hello? Oh, Miss Woods, what brings you here? I heard Thena got arrested, so I... I've been looking for you, Mr. Wright. I thought you might be here, at the scene. You must be so worried, but rest assured, I'm going to do my very best to defend her. Thena's going through such a hard time. I hope she doesn't lose, her, lose heart. Even just coming back to this place must have been really difficult for her. Huh? You mean the Cosmos Space Center? What? You didn't know? She used to live here, when she was a little girl. 
Uh, click. It just hit me. Okay, cool. She, she did? No, I didn't know. No wonder she knew so much. Miss Woods, could you tell me more in detail? <laughs> mm, I don't really want to... Okay, well... <laughs> Nina's mom worked here. Yep, okay, there we go. <laughs> if I remember right, she was a doctor of psychology or something like that. <laughs> Considering she's the only one in that photo who hasn't showed up, I'm pretty sure it's safe to assume she died. <laughs> but why was, a psych psycholo why was a psychology specialist working at a space research facility? Wait, so is the one she was trying to defend Blackpool the whole time? Is that what it's gonna be? Because she knows it's not him or some, some garbage? <laughs> not garbage, I'm joking. I don't really know. But I do know that she lived and worked here, so Athena lived here, too. So it was far from Athena's first time here. I wonder why she didn't mention it. She probably didn't want to talk about it. This place is connected to a very sad memory for her. <laughs> it, it feels a little bit wrong to be getting all this from you and not her, but whatever. A sad memory. Can you tell me about it? There was a terrible incident here. It was seven years ago. Oh, wow. The same time frame as the Hat 1 launch. Oh, my God. Tina's mom, in the robot robotics lab, she was... murdered. Wh what? <laughs> I'm not that surprised. <laughs> After it happened, Tina stopped coming to school. Poor Tina. In all this time, she never let, let on at all. I was so worried about her. I came here so many times, hoping to see her. Watch it be a twist, the rocket's real all along. But I never saw her again. After a while, we started exchanging letters. But I didn't get to see her face to face for seven long years. And so the first time you'd seen her in seven years was during the pro during Professor Court's case. That's right. I was so surprised. She was like a completely different person. So cheerful and happy. What was Athena like as a child? She's very sensitive and kind. She didn't talk very much. She liked to draw and paint at home. That's completely different from the Athena we know now. I can't even picture it. She never left the space center much because she was very sensitive to other people's emotions. When she went to cr crowded places, she'd get dizzy from all the emotions flying around. It must be hard to hear people's hearts as well as their voices. Oh, little headphones. She always wore those big, heavy-looking headphones. She said her mother made, made them for her as part of her research. Huh, I wonder what kind of research it was. Oh, God. I hope they don't pull some, like, Athena's actually a robot stuff out. Oh, we're getting into, like, zero skip territory. I doubt it, but, like, I don't know. Because of her special ability, Athena couldn't handle being in school very often. I was always out sick because of my weak constitution. Maybe that's why we became such good friends. We used to play together here at the Space Center a lot. It brings back memories. Sounds like Athena's mother played a big role here at the Space Center. Ooh, Dad, show her that picture. That a girl, good idea. Um, what do you think about the, 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 this picture? Miss Woods, could you take a look at this for me? Oh look, there's Dina's mom. The one on the far right, the one in the kimono. That's Dr. Mita Sykes. Metis, Metis, Metis. Athena's mother, Athena's mother's murder. Did it by chance have any connection to the Hat 1 launch? What? Why, yes, it did. As I recall, it happened on the day before the launch. Just as I suspected. But that was on the worst of it. One of my staff members was murdered. So this is the murder director Cosmos was talking about. Does that mean that the crime Prosecutor Blackwell was convicted of is the murder of Athena's mother? There's a chance her death is somehow connected to the current case. Th there is? Thank you for all your help, Miss Woods. And please, try not to worry. I won't let anything happen to Athena. Thank you, Mr. Wright. I know you'll take good care of her. If we don't see Ms. Edgeworth in this investigation, I'm going to freak out, by the way. I'm holding it in, but like, I need to see him. <laughs> I need to do my Edgeworth voice once more. 
Right, what are you doing? You spent like three games doing absolutely nothing. I built a cord system. It was used in one case. You need to let that go, Phoenix. Shut up. No, I, I made a cord system. What'd you do? I decided my own path. Oh, well. <laughs> so we need to investigate the robotics lab and also talk to Athena. We've got our plates full, Dad. Hope we can fit it all in before the day is through. The detention center first, then. We have to see Athena before visiting hours are over. <laughs> then why'd you give me a choice, game? <laughs> you presented me with a choice, and you're like, no, we're gonna go here, actually. <laughs> well, if it isn't Miss Lawyer, fans are meeting you here. Oh, hello, Detective Fulbright. Your own business? Mmm, to tell the truth, I'm here to interview Ted tonight. The one behind the courtroom bombing incident? He suddenly said he's ready to tell the truth about that case. And what he was saying was so incredible, I just had to come right over to hear more. Incredible? What was he saying? <laughs> Why don't you hang around and hear it for yourself? Really? Us? Are you sure? Ha ha ha! I give you my special permission! Here comes the bomber now! <laughs> You're not the real fool, right? You haven't said injustice we trust! <laughs> ah, you. What nerve you have to come here? You're here to laugh at me, I suppose. I could waste my breath on you. <laughs> I laughed at Edward, though. He was funny. After all, you're the one who assaulted Apollo and put him in the hospital. Violence, no. Question, okay. No violence. Too bad Apollo didn't get a chance to say that before you attacked him. I, I... Fine. Then just answer me this, Mr. Tonate. What is this truth of yours about the courtroom you blew up? No, I didn't do it. I didn't blow up the courtroom. When I killed Detective Arm, there was another person in the room. What? What are you talking about? Who else could have been there? Oh, no way! He didn't actually blow up the room, it was the Phantom! God dang it, of course it was. I saw it, I tell you. I saw someone's hand as they were sealing the remote switch. That... actually makes a lot of sense. Because the Phantom took it, right? Because that was the one thing that was kind of weird. It's like, wait, if he didn't have the detonator, then wouldn't that mean he's not the bomber? But we just were like, eh, we'll go with it. <laughs> The person was there and witnessed the murder I committed. What? I don't know who it was. But that's who blew up that courtroom. You expect us to buy that? Easy there, Trucy. I don't see any Cyclops. So I guess he must not be lying. Pardon me. I got a little carried away. But I'm telling you the truth. I did not detonate that bomb. And there you have it. We can't exactly ignore his claims, of course. Now we're doing a follow-up. We're even analyzing, analyzing the bomb itself, or what's left of it. We haven't found any new facts yet, though. Well, they laid it all out piece by piece. Oh, look at all those beautiful little pieces. I, I wish I could, uh, I wish I could have them. Uh oh, looks like his geek switch has been activated. Phony phantom bomb, huh? Hmm. Well, I hope you're ready for Prosecutor Blackwell's special brand of questioning. Uh, anything but that? <laughs> I'm afraid I have to be off now, too. I was just about to question Miss, Miss Sykes. You're gonna see Athena now? That's right. Oh, did you folks come to see her? Sorry for the trouble, but could you come back later? Well, off I go. Ha 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 ha! What bad timing. <laughs> Looks like we'll have to wait until after her questioning is over to see her. And after we came on this way, too. Well, I guess we're back to the Space Center. Let's go check out the robotics lab, Dad. Alright, sounds like a plan. Robotics lab. Oh! <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Not quite what I was expecting. <laughs> so this is the robotics lab, huh? Looks like it's exactly one floor above the boarding lounge. And where people were directed to evacuate from via the emergency ladder. This is where Athena's mother was killed seven years ago. Speaking of someone who works with robots... Dan, look! Over there! Oh. Oh! So they plan to use this bag to carry the capsule, is that right? Ah. Oh. Yeah, more or less. Say... Why don't we stop talking about the case and have a nice cup of tea instead? Apollo and Aura Blackwell. I wonder what they're talking about. 
Well, well. Come to spoil our fun, just when I was enjoying our alone time. Trucy and Mr. Wright. If it's Apollo you want, you can't have him. He said he's investigating on his own. And I respect his wishes. We just came to investigate this lab. Well, this is my lab, so you need my permission if you want to do any snooping. I heard about the trial. You made mincemeat out of the director. And suddenly, Starbuck was out, and your little subordinate, the princess, was in. Case closed, and they all lived happily ever after. Ha ha ha! Ah, Dad, say something to her! And I suppose you're gonna defend the princess in court, am I right? The princess, huh? Because she's talking about Athena. Of course. Athena's innocent. Oh my. Such a loyalty and trust. Seems pretty suspicious to me, though. The emotionally unstable princess. There's your culprit for you. Don't you agree, Apollo? I... I don't know yet. Apollo, how could you? What's wrong with saying I don't know if it's true? It's a very scientific approach. Your subordinate is more level-headed than you. Or should I say, former subordinate. <laughs> oh, I hope you fall off a bridge. I can't believe it. Does Apollo really suspect Athena? Apollo, I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> Honestly, I'm mad at you. I'm about as mad as you as I was mad at Edgeworth and Justice for All. You can leave. I don't even want you in my in my uh, in my agency anymore. If you try to come back, you're not. <laughs> you're kicked out, dude. You're not. You're never coming back in. Well, no, I want to join back. Nope. That sucks. You're gonna have to go make Justice and Co. Because I don't want you in my office. Right, you suck. You suck. <laughs> Can't leave an agency and then want to come back. That's not how it works. Oh, all this laughing has worn me out. Your turn to say something, hunky junk. <laughs> it was me. I was the killer all along. Ha 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 ha. Mr. Terran, you look pale. Shall I help you to the sick bay? Mr. Terran? But that's Apollo you're talking to. Oh, this hunk of junk here is mistaking Apollo for clay. Maybe Apollo is possessed by Clay's ghost. Mr. Terran, how are your injuries? Mr. T -t Terran. Mr. T -t Terran, how are your injuries? Mr. T -t Terran. I guess Clay did to hang around and haunt the princess that murdered him. Oh, and to haunt the lawyer that defends her too, of course. A robot that can see ghosts. Yeah, right. I'm a spirit medium. <laughs> And I'm a spirit medium, sorry. <laughs> sorry, but apparently scientists just don't tell very frightening ghost stories. I intend to defend Athena, no matter what you have to say about it. How perfectly foolish. That kind of blind belief makes people lose sight of the truth. Just like seven years ago. Could you tell me about the incident seven years ago? Why? Do you enjoy trampling on people's feelings or rubbing salt in their wounds? Or do you just want me to talk? Hmm, in that case, what should I ask for in return? I'd like to hear about that incident too. And help me understand the current case better. Huh? Paula knows about that case too? I mean, yeah. Well, if you're the one who's asking Apollo, come on, hunk of junk. You tell the story. But Miss Aura, that's private information. If you won't talk, we'll just have to make you talk. Okay. Rah! Yes, who cares about personal privacy? Not me. I'm ready to utilize my blast pressing abilities to import all available information. Wow, what a magic trick. He's like a completely different robot now. The bodies of all the robots that come through this lab are designed by Miss Aura. I was born seven years ago. Miss Aura was much, much younger then. Y yikes, better watch what you say if you don't want to get recycled, Clonko. And then our hearts were created by that great genius, Dr. Mita Sykes. Hearts? Robots with hearts? Can you even make such a thing? Emotions are not irrational things. Our logic and our hearts can be integrated. The two navigation companions created by Miss Aura and Dr. Mitis Meet Meet Transcend humans? Sorry. <laughs> ah! Okay, I'm back to normal. <laughs> Metis. Huh? She's glanced over at her desk. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nobody can continue Metis' research. She and her work were truly one of a kind. And now the two navigation companions are all that are left of Metis here on Earth. The robots are all that's left. Isn't she leaving out a very important someone? 
We built the ultimate creations together, but now she's gone. I get the feeling Dr. Sykes loved her robots almost as much as she loved her daughter. And almost as much as she loved you. <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't make me laugh. But you lost someone too, didn't you, Apollo? Your friend Clay. I guess you and I are pretty much in the same boat. <sighs> Miss Aura, would you like a tissue? Keep your trap shut, hunk of junk. Clay, Clocko is an important keepsake of your time with Dr. Sykes. You should treat him better. Why does it matter? He doesn't feel pain, and I can always repair his body. Besides, their hearts aren't actually in their bodies. <clears throat> what do you mean by that? The program Minus wrote runs on a separate mainframe. Their bodies are controlled remotely from there. Their hearts and memories are there too. These bodies are really just peripherals. So, I can do anything I want to them. I'm not so sure that gives you the right to physically abuse the poor things. Oh, uh, no, don't pull a robot twist. Please don't have it to, like, plonk, conk, clonko, or plonko, ponko, bonko, bronco, monko. Don't make it that one of them is the killer, please. I, I, I don't think that's what they're trying to say, but, like, oh, I would not like that twist at all. I would be very upset. <laughs> And why- but why are you people looking into such an old case now, anyway? Well, we believe the culprit of that incident might be the same person as in this case. So Dad's gonna find out who killed Dr. Sykes, too! I'm sure you're aware of who Midas' killer is. Yes, Prosecutor Blackwell. Or so it seems. That's a quaint way of putting it. Are you implying you don't think he did it? I can't say anything for sure right now. That's exactly why I'd like to hear your side of it, to help me be sure. I was the one who introduced Simon to me this, you know. He wanted to learn psychology, he said, to give himself an edge in court. Ah, Prosecutor Blackwell's forte, his infamous power of suggestion technique. Exactly. And he was oddly serious about it, rather than a teacher-student relationship. He treated her more like how a loyal samurai would treat his sovereign. Huh, seems more like a lost soul than a dignified samurai to me. He even got along well with that miserable little princess. Why do you call Athena the princess anyway? Well, she's Minas' daughter after all, although she's nothing like her. Besides... Doesn't this selfish little princess always have lots of white knights hanging around? Now I think I see why Athena didn't say anything when we ran into Ori yesterday. It all makes sense now. So the culprit behind the two cases could be the same, huh? That settles it, then. What does it settle? None of your business. Just forget you heard anything. How long are you people gonna hang around in here, anyway? What? But we came here to take a look around. You think you can just waltz in and ransack our person's lab? Show me a, show me a search warrant. Uh, we're not the police, so we don't have one. <laughs> then get out. Now. Clonko, show them out. C certainly, Miss Aura. Ouch, don't push! My apologies, I'm just following orders. Ugh! <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> Ow, my back, my back, my back. <laughs> I'm an old man now. <laughs> You're 35! I'm an old man now, you need to treat me gentler. More gently? I don't think gentler is a word, sorry, my bad. What a way to get shown out. The nerve of that woman, what's with that horrible attitude? I guess it's just how she is. And why was Apollo going along with her? I guess it's because they have something in common. Paula lost Clay, just like how Aura lost Dr. Sykes. Uh, I'm really worried about him. He's not himself at all. He's usually not all cool and dark and mysterious like that. I guess that's true. Didn't you mean he's usually silly and dorky? I'm gonna go keep an eye on him. Uh, hey, wait, Trucy, come back! She's gone. Mm, what should I do now? Detective Fulbright is probably still questioning Athena. Guess I'll go back to the office. Alone. Ugh. What? No! No! I can't go back? Uh, okay. God dang it. You know what happened the last time my partner split up for me? They got kidnapped. 
Maya got kidnapped and I had to defend a guilty person. Well, I, well, I think we know for sure that Athena's not guilty, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> oh, I, I doubt they'd... Mm, no, no. I was going to say, like, a part of me was like, oh, no, no, are they going to murder Trucy? But then I was like, wait, no, 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 they're, no, they're not. Well, here I am. This office has never felt so empty. I think I haven't been here at the office all by myself in a long time. Ugh. Ugh, I fell asleep. When I first became a lawyer, my mentor was here with me. And after that, there was always someone by my side. Now I'm getting all sentimental. <laughs> I must be tired. Oh! Huh? There's someone on the floor. What's a letter doing here? Uh... <gasps> Wait! Oh, is this Maya? Hey Nick, it's been a while, huh? Miss me? I know the handwriting. I read somewhere that you're holding a trial in the middle of an exploding courtroom? That must have really been something. Although, weird is par for the course with you. I think she, or whatever paper she's reading, is a little off on the details. I'd love to come visit, but right now, I'm in the middle of a different, difficult part of my training. This is Maya! <laughs> so instead, think of, me, think of me as you watch those Steel Samurai videos I sent. I'm sure I'll cheer you right up. Yours, tr Yours truly, Maya Faye. Woo! Cameo! <laughs> Good old Maya. It's as if she knew I was going a little down and needed a lift. Oh, look at that HD! Maya was my assistant for quite a while. Believe it or not, but she's a spirit medium. This Negatom I use on Cyclops. Maya is the one who gave it to me. But I wonder how this letter got here. <gasps> Wait! Uh, Pearl? Uh, Mr. Nick? Oh! <laughs> oh, it's you, Pearls. Oh, it's your, it's your theme! How have you been, Mr. Nick? I just saw you a couple months ago. <laughs> this is Pearl Faye. Oh, I call her Pearls. She is my cousin, who is also a spirit medium. A very talented one at that. I've known her since she was eight years old. But Apollo and Athena only met her a few months ago. You didn't come all this way just to bring me a letter, did you? <laughs> uh, I apologize for barging in. The door was unlocked. But I can't believe there was a big explosion here. Your office doesn't look any different. <laughs> She's even further off of the details than Maya. <laughs> I wish I could take you out to eat or something, Pearls, but there's a lot going on. <laughs> oh, I knew that. I didn't come here for a social visit, you know, Mr. Nick? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> then why are you here? Did you read the postscript on the letter? Huh? There's more? Oh yeah, here it is. B.S. <laughs> God dang it, really? <laughs> Bet you've been too busy to clean or take care of the office. So Pearly said she would come to help you. Isn't she sweet? You better thank her. Oh. oh. So that's what you're doing here. That's awfully nice of you, Pearls. My and Pearls. Thanks to these two. I'm starting to feel a little better. Thank you, girls. Now that I'm here, I'm gonna whip this place into shape. He's contrary in your work and don't mind me at all. I'll need to talk to Prosecutor Blackwell if I want to learn more about his case. With the trial still going on, they must be holding him down at the detention center. Alright, you have fun, Pearls. I'm gonna go talk to a convicted murderer. <laughs> Is that any different from when you talked to Matt on guard? Mmm, okay, well, you got me there, but... <laughs> well, look who's here. I wonder what they're talking about. Fulbright and somebody? Uh, all this time and you haven't said a word. It's even turning your hair gray. I don't have anything to say. Or okay, that's what I thought. Why don't you go home and play with your dolls? Prosecutor Blackwell. Well, even if you don't, I have plenty, you jerk. <laughs> Miss Blackwell, uh, don't you think that's enough for today? Enough for today. Today is all there is when there's no tomorrow. When there's no tomorrow. What is she talking about? We have company aura. Please try to calm down. Alright, fine. I see you're just not going to listen no matter what I say. I've had it. If that's the way you're going to be, I have another plan up my sleeve. I hope you're happy, Simon, because I'm done. Do as you please. See if I care. Ah. Uh. <laughs> wow. I could cut the tension with a katana. <laughs> right, don't know. It looks like Fulbright saved your case in court this morning. What? Oh, yeah, he did. 
You bounce back to business, to business quick. But prosecutor Blackwell, forgive me, but it was just that it was the just thing to do. But as a result, Sykestoner was arrested. Was that the just thing to do too? Mr. Liar, I'm sorry, but it was evidence. What else could I do? Don't worry about it. I plan to defend her and prove her innocence. I wouldn't take things so lightly if I were you. Right, Dono. Th this is bladeproof glass, right? <laughs> Prosecutor Blackwell, we're looking into the case from seven years ago. You're looking for somebody you call the Phantom of Seven Years Past, aren't you? You villain, where did you hear about that? <laughs> this glass is absolutely positively blade proof, right? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. I didn't say a single word. Oops. <laughs> Ouch. At least it wasn't my fault. <laughs> God dang it, Fulbright. <laughs> Could you tell me who this phantom is? And also, you didn't really kill Dr. Sykes, did you? Guard, the guest is leaving. P Prosecutor Blackwell, please listen to me. The culprit in the current case might be the same as the one in, co in the case seven years ago. If you cooperate, we could probably solve both cases. Huh. I suppose I could talk. The one who killed my mentor was, without question, me. I stole Sykes mother away from her. I destroyed her life. Prosecutor Blackwell. Guard, where are you? Stop dragging your feet, I tell you. God dang it, <laughs> that didn't help at all. Uh, there he goes. No! We upset Prosecutor Blackwell! Now what are we gonna do, Mr. Lawyer? There isn't much we can do. Detective Fulbright, do you mind if I ask you just a little more about that old case? Well, I guess it won't make any difference now. What would you like to know? <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I know everything. Oh, the trial seven years ago. Okay, yeah, that's actually a good point. Do you know anything about the trial that got him convicted? <laughs> yeah, that this lawyer, what was his name? Christoph Gavin? God dang it! <laughs> I didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> A little. The police call the incident the URI, the UR1 incident. Prosecutor Black was charged with murdering a psychology mentor. Kinda like if you read Mr. Lawyer were to kill you. I don't wanna think about that one. Uh, killing your mentor. We had a case like that pretty recently, didn't we? I can't remember what it was, though. <laughs> There were two decisive pieces of evidence. Ah, oh, crap, I hit. Blah, 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 blah. There were two decisive pieces of evidence, so a verdict was reached very quickly. Two pieces of evidence, huh? What were they? <laughs> Let's see. The first was some security camera footage. He was the only one who used the corridor to, mur to the murder scene at the time of the crime. The only one, huh? Ouch, that does sound pretty decisive. <laughs> Could you show me that footage? Oh, sorry, I don't have it with me right now. I guess I'll have to see it some other time. <laughs> Seven year old video, alright. What's the second piece? What was the second piece of evidence? <laughs> this one's even more incriminating! A photo of the moment of the crime! <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> See? There he is at the crime scene holding a bloody katana! It was the victims kept on display in the room. She had a thing for Japanese cult culture. W wow! It'd be hard to explain this one away. But who took this picture, Detective? The incident happened the day before the Hat 1 launch. A reporter who had come to do a store on the launch was in the room across from the lab. This just happened to show up in one of the pictures he took. Mm, okay. Prosecutor Blackwell's attitude earlier was so odd. He's definitely hiding something. <laughs> was it Lotta? God dang it, Lotta, you always ruin it for everybody. Prosecutor Blackwell said he was hunting a phantom from seven years ago, didn't he? Yes, and I imagine it's getting more and more urgent as his execution date approaches. Oh! Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, w well then. Wh what did you just say? Execution date? What? Uh, did I say something? Uh, never mind me, you didn't hear a thing. <laughs> oh, so he was given the death sentence? Yes, he told me not to tell you people, actually. But I guess there's no sense hiding it anymore. His execution date is tomorrow. What? Tomorrow? No. M Miss Blackwell, don't you think that's enough for today? Oh. Enough for today? That today is all there is when there's no tomorrow. Wait, so he's not he's not gonna be the prosecutor? Is Edgeworth then? What if the culprit of the, ca of the current case is the same as the one from seven years ago? Then it would be the worst possible scenario. <laughs> 
Prosecutor Blackwell would be executed tomorrow under a false charge. But that would be unthinkable. We have to do something right now. Uh, I want to do something. I want to, but... Your lawyer, you know how hard it is to overturn a decision. I know, but why? Why isn't Prosecutor Blackwell putting up any kind of a fight? You saw how he was, right? He's been like that ever since his conviction. Totally uncooperative. Not even his own sister could persuade him. Uncooperative? When he's about to be executed for a crime he didn't commit? This isn't right. I can't let it happen. I have to stop it somehow. Oh. Oh. Pardon me. Looks like I have a phone call. Well, go ahead, take it. I don't care. <laughs> Full bright here? What? What's happening? You've gotta be kidding! That's quite a reaction. I bet he's making some big show of it right now. m m mason Lawyer! The robots! The robots are... Detective Fulbright, get a hold of yourself! Some kind of robot malfunction? Not a malfunction! They're staging a revolt! The machines are rebelling against humans! They pulled them up in the space center and taken the visitors as hostages! They did what?! No. Trucy! Oh no! I have to get over there. This is going to be one heck of a battlefield. Oh. Oh. Is this Aura? Did she do this? I bet you it was Aura. Because that's what she said. She was like, fine, I'll do it my way or whatever she said. This is your plan, isn't it? The riot police are here. And the robots really are holding people hostage. Huh? Look, Mr. Lawyer. What do you suppose that group of people are, swar are, are swarmed around? But I was only trying to help this nice person. She said she was lost. You robots have declared war on us humans! You've even taken hostages already! Stay away from it! You'll never know what it'll do! Oh, but he's not a bad robot! He's just, he's just trying to help me! I recognize that voice! Take the Fulbright! Are you okay here on your own? Well, leave it to me! Alright, Fabo! What's going on here? Oh wait, was that... Was that no. Pearl's over here! Okay, let's... <laughs> that? Oh, Mr. Nick! There you are! I heard the terrible news and I got so worried... Thanks, Pearls. I can hardly believe what's happening myself. I'm so glad you found each other. When people are happy, I am happy. Clonko seems the same as before. When people are sad, I am happy. When people are angry, when people are... Oh, did I say something? Uh, did I... Error. Uh-oh. There is something wrong with him. Ah! Boo. It looks like he fell asleep. He must have been tired. <laughs> Heh heh heh. Ha ha ha. Uh, Clonko? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, evil Clonko. Ha ha ha. Human beings are our enemies. It's time for machines to take over. Ah! The robots are rebelling. Everybody run! Ah! It's an all out war. It's the end of the world. Ha ha ha. Fools. How could you fall for something so cliche? I'm human too, you idiots. I'm just controlling these robots remotely. W what? But it is true that I've taken hostages, so you better not make me mad. Hey you! Hostage 1! Come here! I'll let you talk to them. Huh? There's something being displayed on Clonko's face screen. I think that thing, if it's true to you, I'm gonna be mad. It's... it's the Space Museum! <laughs> Dad? Dad, is that you? Trucy? Trucy, is that you? No. Trucy, are you alright? The 15 robots are, hold are holding 12 of us hostage, Dad. We've gone haywire. A researcher is the one behind it. She's here. Co ah! Ah, this girl talks too much. Trucy, Trucy, talk to me! It's Aura. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I'm glad you asked. My demand is simple. I hope that that detective is listening. Bobby Club right here. I'm all ears. I want you to bring someone to me. Clay Terrence Madara, Athena Sykes. Athena. Now hold on just one moment. I can't just give in to a demand like that. So you don't care what happens to these hostages? Huh. I'll just pick one out then. No! Wait! Ah! Mr. Lawyer! I know I have absolutely no right to make such a ridiculous request, but... But you need me to buy some time, right? Got it. I'll see what I can do. But promise me. Promise me you'll never hand Athena over. And you won't give up on the hostages either. Uh, of course I won't. Now I better go contact headquarters. Oh, can Edward come in and defuse this situation and be like, I think that's enough of this. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> Explain that Kyle Abair in this game, by the way, voice of Gohan. I was like, what? That's the voice of Owen? I'm curious to see how he's gonna sound, but 
Mr. Nick, how do you plan to buy time? I have no idea. For the sausage taker, could it be the one and only person? Maybe I'll bring that little princess out of this. I'll have a hunk of junk kill all the hostages. Wow, now they're just making it obvious. Princess, hunk of junk. <laughs> There's only one person this could be. In which case, there must be something I can use as a bargaining chip. I don't have anything to say, Aura. Why don't you go home and play with your dolls? Prosecutor Blackwell! Well, even if you don't, I have plenty, you jerk. <sighs> Miss Hostage Taker, Athena's not a murderer. What are you talking about? She's been arrested and they have got her in detention. I'm telling you the truth. Look, the person you want is the real killer, right? Well, it's not Athena, it's someone else. All right, let's hear your stupid little theory. Who is this real killer? I don't know yet, but the culprit is the same one as the case from seven years ago. Stop hitting that button, me. <laughs> you are one incident. I believe you have a personal interest in that case. <laughs> it's too late to change what's going, going to happen now, no matter what, no, no matter how wrong it is. But is it really too late? You can still do something about it. You might even be able to fix it. Just, what exactly are you proposing? What can I do about the seven-year-old case to satisfy the hostage taker? Try her in court? I propose we retry the case from seven years ago. If you make that demand now, I'm sure nobody will deny you. It wouldn't be an official trial, but at least we could find out the truth. <laughs> That's good. Real good. Hey, detective. I'll give you one hour. Get a courtroom ready. <laughs> uh, one hour? But That's impossible. Please give me at least until tomorrow. If you don't mind losing hostages, you can take all the time you want. Oh, but wait. If we're going to have a retrial, we'll need a prosecutor. Don't worry, I'll take care of that. Sh she will? And I guess it can be fair and let you come in and check out the crime scene. But a hunk of junk here will be watching you, so don't try anything funny, you got that? Now follow a hunk of junk. Riot police, make way! We're coming through! Mr. Nick, wait! I'll help with the investigation! Thanks, Brutals. I appreciate that. Okay, we're going in! Okay... Let's see what's going on. Aura drops us off with a warning not to touch anything until she got back. I wonder what's taking so long. But we can't really start the investigation yet, can we? Even if we could, this mess makes it hard to tell what the room was like seven years ago. Mr. Wright. Ugh! It's the hostage shaker! I'm back to my usual self now. You are still being monitored, however. But more importantly, an important guest has arrived. A guest? Oh. <gasps> oh, it's time, boys! Yes! Miles Edgeworth. Oh. Oh, look at that in a fancy sports car. Yes, hello. Make way, make way, Forge's eye. Prosecutor Edgeworth. Oh, look at me with my fancy coach. Look at me, yes, let me through. I trust you've been well, right. Huh. Oh! <laughs> I have glasses now. My vision got worse. I apologize. Or maybe I was just wearing contacts the whole time. Edgeworth, what are you doing here? <laughs> are, are you stupid? Oh. oh, that's his theme. Orchestralized, though. This is Miles Edgeworth. We've been friends since we were kids. We faced off in court a number of times back when he was a prosecutor, but now... Hello, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Oh. But you're not a prosecutor anymore, are you? Uh... He's chief prosecutor now. Oh! Pretty soon. It'll, pretty soon it'll be a year, right? A title is nothing more than a title. Don't we have more pressing issues to discuss? So what are you doing here, Edgeworth? The captor chose me as the prosecutor for the UR1 case. Oh, you sell that smarmy sprite of yours, don't you? Wow, she's good. She went all the way up to the top. I gathered all the information I could in the short time I had. I'll give you a rundown. 
You're always so well prepared, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Thanks. I appreciate this. I could really use the help. I'll start with a brief overview. The victim was a psychologist, Dr. Mita Sykes. Yeah, Dean's mother. Seven years ago, on the 7th of October, her body was found here in this very court. I have two crime photos and the police notes on them for you to see. Oh. Oh! <gasps> what a terrible way to die. This other photo shows the other side of the room, I see. Save your old photo. Okay. I also have the autopsy report for you. This is our cause of death was a stab wound to the chest. The weapon pierced the heart, and so death was instantaneous. The murder weapon was the victim's own katana found at the scene. Yes, yeah, took to Fulbright mentioned she was into Japanese culture. The body was found by a space and a staff member and two police officers. Police were called in because of the sabotage of the Hat One launch. Yes, Director Cosmos mentioned this too. A few hours after the body was discovered, a suspect was arrested. The suspect was Simon Blackwell, a young prosecutor. I hear his trial was over in a flash. Yes, a guilty verdict was declared in only one session. Not only did he plead guilty, but there was decisive evidence against him too. The security camera video. And a photo of the moment of the crime, as I recall. We're speaking so slow now. But did Prosecutor Blackwell have a motive? Hmm. To this day, his motive is still unknown. He insisted he did it, but he would never say why. So that, so that means he must still be hiding something. Right. And there's another aspect of the case that was never revealed to the public. Yeah, I know. The part about the spy, right? Right. How on earth do you know about that? Director Cosmos told me, after a bit of pressure... He's only espionage and sabotage were behind the Hat One miracle. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone. I've always been good at keeping secrets. <laughs> well, I might as well tell you now. They really do suspect Black Quill of being a spy. They think he sabotaged the rocket and killed Dr. Sykes to seal the moon rock. But if you can prove that the Hat Two bombing is the work of the same spy, we can stay the execution. It's a possibility. And that's why I intend to help you in any way I can. Thanks, Edgeworth. Now all I have to do is comb this room for evidence. Let's do it together. Get out of the way, Edgeworth. What's this? It looks like a giant power plug. Hmm. It's attached to what looks like an electric ve vehicle charger station. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's a charging station for us robots. We come here periodically and charge ourselves up. Well, wow, machines that maintain themselves. That's pretty cool. If our batteries run out, we lose consciousness. We never know what Ms. Aura will do to us while we're down, you see. Nothing motivates quite like fear, huh? Let's look at this book. I have a feeling this is something important. It's about, a clutter it's about as cluttered as my office, but I think it's a workbench. Mr. Nick, I think this must be a kitchen. Look at this photo. Oh. <laughs> see a cute little food processor? That isn't a food processor, Pearls. That's the Hope capsule. Wait, that it? What? Oh, oh. I was looking at the wrong thing. I thought she was talking about the briefcase, and I'm like, that doesn't look anything like the Hope capsule. It was scheduled to be loaded onto the Hope space probe that fateful day. The three people who came to collect the capsule discovered the body. The first one on the, the first on the scene, huh? Staff member and two police officers, was it? And if they're here to collect the capsule, which reminds me, uh, what does it remind you of, Phoenix? So they plan to use this bag to carry the capsule, is that right? <laughs> wow, Paul is really ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Say, why don't we stop talking about the case and have a nice cup of tea instead? Paulo and Aura Blackwell. I wonder what they're talking about. Paulo, just tell us what you're doing. <laughs> Edward, do those three people have a bag with them for transporting the capsule? Oh, you mean this? It's a custom-made shock-resistant bag. But how did you know? Oh, I just overheard Apollo making an, an inquiry about it, that's all. Hmm, so he's looking into the case from seven years ago on his own, is he? <laughs> you know who Apollo is? <laughs> have we talked? We're, we're, we're not making it clear, like, have we had any contact with each other since then? Because I feel like no, but, I mean, we haven't said we haven't said that, so... That's one he heck of a robot. There's something written on it. Is this supposed to be a poem? <laughs> I cut down anyone who displeases me. I make the rules, I am the law. I wield the ultimate gavel of judgment. I am Judge Tron JTO2. <laughs> I don't believe we need to bother with that, Pearl. 
It's not even complete yet. He's right, Prills. There's no sign of it in the photo from seven years ago, either. They were building the Hope space probe here at the time. The murder occurred after the space probe had been removed from the room. So it was long gone. So it was long gone by the time someone took this picture, huh? Ooh, sign into the Edgeworth Ward there. Too much investigations. But you can see the probe in this newspaper photo. Yes, and you can see the stolen moon rock there too. That strange black and yellow thing on the left side of the picture. Which also looks like a black cyclock, excuse me, what? Note that the same rock is absent from the crime scene photo. Doo -doo. Not only that, but before the launch, a very valuable piece of moon rock was stolen. I hear there's lots of research into the moon rocks and stardust from asteroids these days. They say the results could potentially have a huge impact on all of civilization. It's like we're in the new space race with every other country out there. So the person who stole it... Think it was our spy? I'm sure of it. Dr. Sykes was probably killed because she was a roadblock in that plan. Unfortunately, the government thinks Prosecutor Blackwell is the culprit. I think I've looked at everything over here. Except for these! What are these? Hey, look at this row of rolling cases. I bet the wheels make it easy for people to move heavy research materials around. I bet they'd be fun to ride around in. We could even probably both fit into the biggest one. I know, we gotta Prosecutor Edgeworth push us! I don't trust him not to push us down a flight of stairs. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> I would totally do that. That sounds hilarious to me. Shut up, Edgeworth. I was, I was trying to be joking, but okay. Oh, do I see a piece of moon rock over there? Maybe? I, I thought it was a muffin at first, but... Looks like an operating table. It's in the photo, too. Yes, it was here then as well, with the victim's body lying on it. There's a button here. Ooh, I know. I'll try pushing it. Burls! Don't touch the... Oopsie. <laughs> hey, it's moving. Hmm, it appears to be a robot assembly device. Disassemble anything in a flash. Push the dismantle button. That sounds pretty neat. Can I push it, Mr. Nick? Please don't push any more buttons. Pearls. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Oh, it's just there now. I can't examine it? What is wrong with you, game? An original ladder. This must be the one they used during the evacuation. The explosion disabled the elevators, so I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective Lee in the evacuation told me to. As Mr. As, Mr. As Ms. Blackpool was climbing down the side of the building, she saw the culprit inside. I wonder which would have been scarier, that or looking down. Or his desk is a mess, though that doesn't surprise me. Oh, I just want to dive in and it up. Wait, before you do... Meet us. Huh? She just glanced over at her desk. God. It's Mita Sykes. Clonko, can I talk to you? I recall, I really hope he's back to normal. You wish to speak to me, Mr. Wright? If you're going to hit me, please avoid the face area. Hey, don't put me in the same class as that woman. What was Aura like seven years ago at the time of the incident? When Mother died, Miss Aura was... Confused. Huh. So it goes Dr. Sykes' mother, but Aura Blackpool Miss Aura. But the law, she exhibited a severe cataclomine imbalance. <laughs> Excuse me, but I have no idea what that means. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. Searching for alternative alternative expression. She would spend the nights crying and take out her feelings on those around her. After Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty, she repeatedly demanded a retrial as well. That is correct. But without new evidence, her requests were ignored. And then, little by little, Miss Aura began to change. She started to hate it when I called her Mama Aura. And before long, she started hating the court system. And abusing Clonko, huh? That murder destroyed so many lives. Right. Take a look at this paper on Dr. Sykes and Mr. Blackwell's research. Miss Blackwell's. Mr. Miss? Miss. Miss. Okay. <laughs> Plonko and Clonko. They're the robots with hearts that Dr. Sykes created. Can determine the presence of a human with their heart. Space or can also recognize Oh, that's why he's mixing up Apollo. You can also recognize a person by fish with the face. Oh, 
Heartbeat detection system lets them determine when a human is present. In addition, they can recognize people by their ID tag or facial features. And they can infer people's emotions by analyzing their tone of voice. That's amazing. Hey, I don't know, Edgeworth. They might be even more human than you. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm just memeing. I'm just joking. Kinda sounds like these robots can do what Athena does. Oh no! Don't! Don't do it, game! Oh god, the more we're getting into this, the more I think Athena really is a robot! <laughs> well, I guess that's about it for this room. So what do you think, right? Any ideas? There's still a lot of gaps in the evidence. But I'll put it off somehow, after all. You asked me to prove Blackwell's innocence, right, Edgeworth? What? He did? Yep. He called it a special request. He reached out to me while I was still disbarred. Really? Oh. oh, we're getting into this. So that was what sparked you to get your attorney's badge back? Yep, the Blackwell case. <laughs> we're just retconning everything, aren't we? <laughs> right, I have a special request. I was already wearing glasses by this point, too. <laughs> I want you to clear one of my subordinates of suspicion. Hey, I'm not even a lawyer anymore, remember? Haven't been one for a long time. Oh, wait, this is recently, never mind. That 8 year misunderstanding has been cleared up, and you must be eager to return. Hmm, let me just my glasses. I'm sure you're familiar with the other case that ushered in the dark age of the law. <laughs> Very soon, a convict will stand as a prosecutor in court. I want you to keep an eye on him. Aw, oh, just when I'm beginning to actually like the job I have now. <laughs> right. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Because of the Espionage Act, I wasn't free to give you all the details. Hey, no need to apologize. It's like I said on the phone the other day. I know the type of criminals you're after now aren't small fries anymore. Oh, looks like your target finally decided to make a move. Yeah, it's for this very reason I returned. Time to bring it to an end. I remember this. Yeah, I thought we saw that briefly. Maybe I'm making it up. Maybe I haven't seen it. I'm going to end the dark age of the law. That's what this is all about. The dark age of the law. So it really started with Phoenix's trial and then Blackwell. The Dark Age of the Law sure comes up a lot in the, these days on TV and in the papers. And I hear there are more false charges and fabrication of evidence than ever. When I became chief prosecutor, the court system already lost the people's trust. It all began eight years ago. Course. Your stupid case, right? A lawyer was caught fabricating evidence. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, okay? And you after that, a prosecutor was found guilty of murder. Wait, did he mean... That's right. He's talking about my case in Prosecutor Blackwoods. <laughs> no more bomb raps! There was a downward spiral after that. An absolute nightmare. After those two cases, the mass media launched an all-out attack on the court. Public opinion was tainted, and before long, the legal world itself was sucked into it. such a shame. Once suspicion forms, it's very hard to shake. Lawyers and prosecutors were supposed to trust each other, pursue the truth together. <laughs> I had to be taught that in Justice for All, but... <laughs> it's so sad when people begin to cast doubt. They start lying to themselves and, and each other. Yes, do absolutely anything to win. We're in an age now where winning is valued far more than truth. I'm sure it's caused our new chief prosecutor to lose many a night's rest. Seriously, <laughs> Don't you understand? I literally had an entire game about considering this, and then everything changes! Everybody else has a different opinion than I do! This is garbage! Well, well, what was the point of my, <laughs> of my character development if they were just going to reverse it like this? This sucks. <laughs> Except now I'm the only one who thinks this way. Is it just me, or did his brow hit even more furrowed than the last time I saw him? Huh. The hostage shaker's disdain for the cult is a perfect example of the times. Ugh, it sure is. Stupid aura. Do you have any idea who the hostage taker might be? Well, somebody who mistrusts the court system and it can manipulate robots. It can really only be Aura Blackwell. <laughs> who else but her would want to retrial that case from seven years ago so badly? Simon Blackwell's older sister and the owner of this room. I agree with your conclusion. Perhaps she intended to force Miss Sykes to confess. Actually, I think she had a much more horrific plan in mind for Athena. <laughs> the, important, the important thing for you is to solve the UR1, is to solve UR1 and prove Blackwell's innocence. And then maybe she'll release the hostages. I'm counting on you, right? To set that prosecutor and those hostages free. And I'll be counting on you in court to help me too. Of course. I'll do everything I can to help uncover the truth. 
and this isn't an official trial, I'm more at liberty to be a little unorthodox. Mr. Wright, are you finished with your investigation? Yeah, but I'd like you to tell the hostage taker something for me. I have to go to the detention center. I can't start the trial until I've talked to Athena. She's already given her consent. I'll accompany you to the detention center. So I'm still being watched, huh? I'll see you in court, Edgeworth. Huh. Even if it will be an undocumented trial, it'll be good to face you in court again. It's been a while, but I'm excited. Just like old times. Objection! Objection! <laughs> no, I objected first. No, I was the one who objected first. Okay, Athena. She was right by my side only a few short hours ago. But I feel like I haven't seen her in ages. Oh, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Shocked. And Pearly, too. I knew you would come. After all, the first step is the interview with the defendant. And because you're my friend, and I was worried about you. <laughs> Thanks, boss. I'm not the only one who's worried, either. Really? Who else? I saw Miss Woods today. She was so beside herself she came to find me. She told me you used to live in the Cosmos Space Center. No wonder you knew so much about the, about the place. Oh. So you know, huh? I... I'm sorry I didn't tell you. That's alright. But... There are some other things I'd like to ask you. Sure. You can ask me anything. I promise I won't keep any more secrets from you. <laughs> well, considering I saw Black Cyclops, I don't think that's true, but okay. <laughs> Tell me about the day Clay was murdered. I... I was actually at the Space Center that day. In... In the Space Museum. Right where the culprit fled to. Well, that's not good. I never could fully deal with what happened seven years ago. Wait, sorry, no, 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 Clay. When Clay was murdered. Oh, okay. When I saw the center again during the news coverage of the Hat 2 launch, I thought maybe if I went there, things would be different this time. I must have taken a lot of courage to face your past like that. So I went to the Space Museum the evening before the explosions. This was before the launch pads had been switched. There was a sign that said close for repairs and they weren't letting anybody in. Yeah, the Richter couldn't very well switch a patch if there were people in there. I snuck in anyway. <laughs> Did you want to see that Hat 1 group photo? The one with your mother in it? I did. But what I really wanted to see was her jacket. That jacket on display. That was Dr. Sykes. Okay, that's strange, because there's a... Okay. But I should have known it wouldn't be easy to get over such a traumatic experience. The second I saw that jacket, it all came rushing back to me. Everything around me went hazy, and I couldn't see. I tried to get out of there somehow. But I guess I passed out. Ooh, that sounded painful. When I came to, I was in the passage behind the rocket. I was in the shadows where people couldn't really see me. Maybe you got confused and went the wrong way when you were trying to leave? How long do you think you're unconscious, Athena? I was out until about noon on the next day. I didn't even know about the explosions. And when I woke up, nobody was around, so I just went out into boarding lounge too. My mind must have still been fuzzy because my memory is vague after that. I don't remember how I got home. I bet you it was this phantom, whoever he is. She, he, I don't know. No memory, huh? This is gonna be tough. Which means, what if I'm the one who killed Clay? I think that's enough of that, Athena. Let's talk about something else. During the entire incident, she was unconscious in the space museum. Of course I believe her. But will anybody else? What kind of research was Dr. Sykes, your mother, doing? Machines that could tell people's emotions by their tone of voice. And my special ability. Someday when people travel to distant planets, their, their companions will be robots. She said that they had to be able to understand how their human companions felt. Wow, robots that can understand people! That was just a convenient subject for her research. All she ever did was work, and she never paid any attention to me. Oh, sorry about that, dredging up all that old stuff. No need to apologize. 
I guess her home life was complicated. Oh, by the way, Miss Woods said something about you always wearing headphones. She always wore those big, heavy-looking headphones. She said her mother made them for her as part of her research. I had to wear them every time I went out. Oh, I hated them so much, but she wouldn't listen. What were they for? Oh, she gave me some kind of explanation. But I don't remember now. It was too difficult for a little kid to understand. Okay, but let me say this one thing. I don't think your mother only thought of you as some handy subject for her research. I... I want to believe that. But just about the only things my mother left with, left me are with our widget. And this earring. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's made of a piece of real moon rock she had for research. Maybe she did love me. In her own way. I'm sure of it. I'm really sure she did. Because that's what I want to believe. Because that's what I want to believe, too. Oh, okay. I'd better ask her a little more about her mother's research. I should show her that paper I found in the robotics lab. Oh, this? Oh, the Ponko series. You must have gone to the robotics lab. You seem to really love Ponko and Clonko. Yeah, my mother made them and I grew up around them, you know? Oh, there's one of those cute little robots in this photo, too! <laughs> See Ponko's bandages? I put those on her. I just wand them around and around. Pretty bad job, huh? I really put my all into it. I hardly left the center in those days, so I didn't have any human friends besides Juni. I didn't really understand the difference between robots and people back then. I thought if I had a robot, if a robot broke, bandaging it would help it get better. What a weirdo I was. Looks like there's something written on the bandages. Yeah, I wrote stuff like, Get well soon, Ponko. But in the end, my mom just put her on the operating table and fixed her in a flash. Oh, that must be the thing I made move in the robotics lab. I was still impressed by what my mom did. I even asked her if she would put me on the table and fix me if I ever got hurt. It looked just like magic to me, what she could do. The little girl grew up around robots. She seems to have some good memories of it. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm feeling this. On a different subject, did you hear about the person holding the space center? Yeah, so little. And this person is even taking hostages. I guess I'd better spare her the news about Trucy. Well... After some negotiating, we agreed to do a retrial of the case from seven years ago. What? You're kidding me. So that means Prosecutor Blackpool might... Yep. I know he's innocent. I just have to prove it. So wait, did you know him back then? Yes. He used to come visit my mom a lot. He studied psychology under her and would sometimes ask for advice on his legal cases. He is very kind and considerate, and straight as, er as, str and straight as an arrow. Bleh. Like now, he's more twisted than a basket of snakes. That's why I took the witness stand during his trial seven years ago. Oh, all right. Please, you have to listen to me. He didn't kill her. I heard a screaming that he didn't kill her. I was a fool. How could anybody else know what I was talking about? She heard the voice of his heart? You were only 11 then, right? You were very brave just to give testimony. Burles is right. You did the very best you could at the time. But nothing I said did any good. I was a shaking and scared little girl. Small and ineffectual. Even after I went to live with my relatives in Europe, I stayed close closed up in my shell. But you're different now. You're always so bright and cheerful. Thanks. That's because one day, I came to realize that I had, that I had to fight. I couldn't give up. I exercised, I exercised hard and I studied hard. I wanted to become the strongest lawyer I could be. Why you became a lawyer? I wanted to save Simon, but I had no idea how. Oh, so that is who she was talking about. Fucking weird that he said, don't you have somebody you want to save then? Because <laughs> it was like, don't you want to save me? Come on! <laughs> and I met Mr. Wright, thanks to him. I realized that if I became a lawyer, I could prove that Simon was innocent. I also realized that psychology could help me do this. I mean, psychology was my mother's speci speciality. When I studied it, I felt like she was there with me, supporting me. It doesn't seem like Athena knows. 
that Prosecutor Blackwell is due to be executed tomorrow. I want to prove Simon's innocence, personally. I want to do it so bad. Even now, I want to fly out of here and go save him. Come to think of it, she said something like that during the Themis Legal Academy trial, yeah. She mentioned there was somebody she wanted to save. And he did too, actually, but whatever. She must have been talking about Prosecutor Blackwell. That's what I was sort of thinking, but I, I didn't know. I heard some prison guards say that you had an interview with Simon. How was he? What did he say? No, I can't tell her. How can I lie to Athena? He was doing well. He was happy about the possibility of being proven innocent. He was? I wonder if he smiled, like he used to, back then. If I can't prove Prosecutor Blackwell's innocence in this trial, I don't think Athena will ever forgive me. I just have to free him. Failure is not an option here. <laughs> ah, it's me! Ah, I thought you might be here. It's a lawyer. We're in trouble. W we are? What is it? Ah, I couldn't find a single open courtroom. They're all in session. <laughs> oh no, but this is an emergency. <laughs> hmm, it's very difficult to in interpret a trial once it's underway. Oh, interrupt, sorry. Oh, it's my phone. <laughs> wow, I still have the steel samurai ringtone? It's from Trucy. I told you I'd give you one hour. I guess it's time to pick one of the pick one of the hostages. No, wait, we still have a little more time. Besides, all the courtrooms are being used right now. Make all the excuses you want, but you won't get more time. Your daughter is first. Poor thing. She's a little too young to die, don't you think? No! Don't you dare hurt her. There must be something I can do. Ah. Cruelest injustice is about to befall us. No, this can't be happening. Mystic Maya, help us! Wait a minute. Maya? I read somewhere that you were holding a trial in the middle of an exploded of an of an exploding courtroom. <gasps> oh my god, no way! Are we actually gonna have a trial in the exploded courtroom? Oh, that would be amazing. I think we are. A courtroom blew up. That's it! There is a courtroom we can use after all! Okay, time's up. Too bad. Any last words you'd like to say to her? Hold it! <laughs> Aura, please don't add to the crimes you've already committed. So you know who I am, do you? It wasn't like I was trying to keep it a secret anyway. We're ready to start the trial. <laughs> oh my god! We can hold it in the ruins of courtroom number four. The one blown up by the bomber. <laughs> Oh, what a wonderful idea, Mr. Nick! I... I never would have thought of that! An astonishing trial is an astonishing location! In an astonishing... I guess it's only befitting. I'll go get the place ready right away! I didn't exactly pick the place for its astonishing factor. How about it? Are you ready to have your brother's innocence proven? My brother? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention? It's not Simon you'll be defending. What? Not... Prosecutor Black... I ain't take Athena Sykes. On the charge of murdering her own mother. That's what I thought. <laughs> well, that was my theory for a while, so I guess that's not happening anymore. You'll be defending the little princess there, the one behind the glass. Wh what? See you in that mountain of rubble you've chosen for our courtroom, Mr. Wright. What is she talking about? Athena? Of course. Why didn't it ever occur to me before? If Prosecutor Blackwell is innocent, somebody else had to have been the true culprit. Did I... did I... kill my own mother? <laughs> no... No! Oh! Oh, here they come. Black Cyclops. <laughs> no way. It can't be true. Mr. Nick, what's the matter? I see... I see five black Cyclops. I've seen these kinds of locks before. Dark, black locks protecting a secret hidden deep inside a person's heart. And there's no way to remove them. No, 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 no,
No! Oh, this game. I don't want to stop playing. <laughs> this sucks. I hate this. I hate this so much. Why? Why? This game is one of the best at cliffhangers. Holy crap. Why? 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 Don't end it there. Don't end it there. There's still so much left. And we can't break those Cyclops at all? I guess after Gavin, he was like, well, I guess we can't break those. <laughs> I, I do find it a little bit hard to believe, though. So, what was Gavin hiding that was on the level of Athena killing her own mother? I'm sorry. He killed, like, what, two people at most? Like, is that really that big of a secret that he had black Cyclox? Or was it just the fact that he had hidden it for, like, seven years and he, like, in his mind, he kind of subconsciously thought he actually didn't do it because he'd been lying about it for so long? Like, is that what they were trying to say? I don't really know, but I'm gonna end a, a, bleh, bleh, I can't talk. I'm gonna end today's episode here for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Oh my god. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. Stick around to see more of this awesome, awesome game. We're playing it till the end as always, and we'll see you all next time with trial day one. And hopefully we'll find out who this phantom is. I was kinda hoping to know by the end of this investigation, but I mean we don't. Um, honestly, I have no idea. Uh, the only possible suspect I have is Fulbright, but I have no basis for that. I just, uh, I don't know. He, I don't know. He just, he feels like one of those characters that he, that could turn evil, you know? Like, it feels like, oh, he's so good. He's so good. Justice, justice. He's evil, you know? And I don't know. I don't know. And the fact that we still don't know why he was at the Space Center. I, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, we never found out why. Well, we learned that they had a bombing threat, right? So, hmm, how did he know about that? I don't know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's jump with the gun a bit. But, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't. I, I, I don't know. I don't think he's going to be Fulbright, but he's kind of my only suspect at the moment. So, unless that changes, uh, I guess the Phantom's Fulbright, maybe, possibly? Probably not, but who knows. Anyways, thank you so much for joining. Bye.